Hi everyone, today we're going to talk about PowerShell and the hash tables, so how to stay key value maps in the variable. Let's have a look. Hello again, if you haven't met, my name is Kamil Protyshyn and I've been recording videos about PowerShell for about a year now. And in this series about PowerShell, I'm going into depth on the specific topics so that hopefully you can either learn something new or, you know, improve your daily coding. So what is a hash table? Last week we've talked about arrays and arrays allowed you allowed us to store like a bunch of data, but that was all about like a one type bunch of numbers, bunch of names, bunch of something. But that was it was kind of flat. And hash tables is actually, well, let's go for our actual official definition as per Microsoft. A hash table is a compact data structure that stores one or more key value pairs. For example, a hash table might contain a series of IP addresses and computer names, where the IP addresses are the keys and the computer names are the values, or vice versa. So in other words, I can have a, in the hash table, I can have a one value that will say, say computer name, and then next to it, I will have a, an IP address. And then I can just say, give me a, by asking for this computer name, it will show me the IP address. Although it can do, I can have multiple properties. I can, for example, create kind of like an employee structure. So first name is that, surname is that, email is that. And I can store it, it all in one hash table. And then what I can do with multiple hash tables, I can store it in an array. That, therefore, that's why we're going that way, arrays, hash tables. And then actually after this one, we'll be talking about PowerShell custom object, which at least as far as structure goes, is really similar to hash table. So let's have a look really what we can do, how we can create it. So hash table is pretty much usually stored in variable. And the way how we do that is we specify the variable name and then we do add and then we do curly brackets or squiggly brackets as they say. So let's just pretty much do that. So you can probably straight away see similarity with array because in array, rather than square brackets, you use normal brackets and that's why well, you see from this beginning, this is very similar. Okay, so how do we add things to my hash table? Well, if I starting with the blank hash table like here, I can pretty much use a method called add, and then I need to pass in two parameters. One is the key name and the other one is value. So in that case, I'm doing a pretty much kind of like a Python details. So if I do hash, now we can see how it works. We have a name. So this is pretty much everything on the left hand side. And then we have a value, which is all about right hand side. So we have pretty much what I've match created here is I ma matches. Now you might notice the order is different than I created it. And this is correct. Hash tables, they are not expected to be in the order like you create them. PowerShell might just pull them randomly. So don't expect them to be in order. There is actually a way to store values exactly as you pass them to hash table, but we get to that. And then obviously when I create things, add things to the hash table, I can remove them. So if I get here, hash remove surname, we should see that surname is gone and yep, it's not there anymore. So it's gone. So it's just how I do that. I just, in the, in the normal brackets, I pass in the name of the key. So that's on the left hand side. But if I have information up front, I can actually create hash table in that kind of way. So I'm specify my variable, then I again do at symbol and then curly brackets. And then in here I pass in the information in this key value pair. So in that case, person, and you can see uh, you can see for for the key value, you don't even need to specify quotation marks. You can if you want, you don't, it's up to you. It's, it's your preference, but I'm pretty much doing that person is Mike, email is Mike at Mike.com and favorite pet is dog. So let's try and there we go. This is my mic. So depending how you want to use it or if you know uphand or maybe you'll be passing a bunch of variables on the right hand side. And now the details, adding the key that already exists there, froze. So if I, for example, I have a pet yeah, and I want to add another one, I can't, it froze. So something to watch out for, for checking whether we have a, that parameter or not, it will, well, PowerShell will complain. All right, so how we can actually access the stuff? Like, because obviously in here I did all of them. I did like by ask for the whole hash table, but what if I want just specific part of it or specific item? There are two ways. One is I specify the hash table and then I do square brackets. And then in the brackets, I put the name of the key I want. So in that case, I want the pet. So it gives me, from details, it wants me pet, it gives me dog. So we see pet is actually dog. Or I can actually do by property name dot 
touchpad. So which really which one you prefer? I personally look that way because this is very explicit. I really like this way because it actually explicitly tells me this is hash table on this property from this hash table, but it's down to you. And we can oh we can actually access it via variable, yeah. So we still have a property email and then it should give me back the email and it does. So this way of doing things is very useful when you are dynamically creating properties in the hash table and then you dynamically are asking them. So it's probably a bit more advanced, but if you need to, yeah, absolutely you can do that. Or if I like to like access multiple properties at the time, because I don't need to do only one at the time, I can actually do it by in the in the in the square brackets and kind of like with an I'm passing kind of an array so I'm casting one comma next variable and PowerShell gives me in that case them back in the order I'm requesting them and now something like always like to know about PowerShell doesn't throw when you request the property that does not exist okay so it throws when you try to add something that is there but it doesn't when it's not there so I think it didn't complain doesn't mean it's okay. So how we can quickly check it? We can do the bool statement, yeah? So we do tell the parser that this is a bool, so true or false, and then my parameter. That's how we can fairly quickly do that. So how do we actually update the values, yeah? Because obviously I might need to override or maybe it was blank or I, don't know, I need to change it. So we see, for example, in that case, I'll have a pet and I like to update the pet to snake. So let's try. And now we see that pet used to be dog and now pet is snake. And what if I want to actually add a new value? Well, as we did it before, but also there's another one really nice constructor that says the same way I'm accessing the, the property via square brackets, I can actually do the same to create new ones if they are there or they are not there. Let's try. And we see now we have a drink flat white, which yeah, I still can't do myself. I can do espresso. I mean, I can do cappuccino. I can do flat white. So, yeah. Anyways, I can do the same with the one I'm doing the dot property. So we see that now pet became dog again. And then we can add, say, food, that lamb shish kebab. And we have a food. So we can do it both ways. Just showing you that your, it's your preference. How we can loop through, power, through, through PowerShell, how we can loop through hash table. Because as we know, if we actually will go and open the hash table, we see that there's a keys property. So we have keys and we have values. So in that case, what we're doing, let's say if we're going with the for each, we're going to for each key that exists in the keys, give me key and then so give me the name. In that case, what we're doing here, we're showing the show, give me the name of the key and then actually retrieve the value for that key. As we've seen before, in that case, I'm using this in this kind of more dynamic way. So now we see this is my hash table, but pretty much passed as the for, uh, with the for loop. So I could actually now do something about that. I could put it in the script or do something, but that's how we iterate over. Or we can use for each object if you are prefer each objects. Obviously then my property name became my keys. So we pipe in the keys. Yeah, that's actually important. Bit. We pipe in the actual keys. So I the keys and then my keys becomes my ps object yeah or dollar dollar sign underscore so in that case i will get the same result so if you prefer use for each object go ahead or we have a actually dedicated get enumerator there and get enumerator is another way of accessing that but that way you see i can kind of work with this like i will work with the normal object so i can actually go get enumerator and then i can actually do dollar sky dollar sign underscore key and then value. So it's kind of like if I was normally piping, I can have that experience with get enumerator. And the thing is, while we are looping through the hash table, we can't update values on fly because that, that looks kind of normal. Yeah, you give me that key. So for that key, I'd like to update the value so that it will be this. But then it throws that I just cannot do that. To actually do the updating of the values, we, there's a special way of doing that special. Like it's, by special, I mean, it's not that obvious that we kind of need to clone the keys on the fly. Yeah, so in that case, I'm asking for my hash table and give me keys, clone that keys, and then I can for each. So in that case, let's just show that in details. We still have that values. And now what I'm doing here for each of these keys, each of its value will be sanitized. So let's do it. And it happened. Yeah, you see, it's done it. So we need to clone up front, which is, well, not that stay when you first time approach it, but hopefully 
that will save you some time. So now something about adding, throwing the logic, yeah? Like, how can I know that hash table exists? Well, let's see, we know that details exist. So what's gonna happen? Well, it executes, it's there. Yeah, so what happens if I have an empty hash table? I just created and this is empty. Well, you see it's empty, but it's there, it exists. So Pausch actually keeps track of it, that yeah, it is there. And now how are we checking if the key is there? So on details, uh, let, let me grab details. We have a property called person. So in that case, yep, the, the, this property is there and therefore do something. So this is kind of useful when you are adding things dynamically to the to, to the hash table and then you actually want to make sure that actually they are there. That's that's how you can do that. Okay, now how will PowerShell behave when I add, you know, a, an empty string, a null value and then a false, so a false, so it won't be true, it will be, it will be there, but it will be false. Let's see how the if will behave then. So we see we have null, which is empty, we have empty string and we have false, which is false. Yeah, PowerShell doesn't really do it here, but actually this is false as far as bull goes. Okay, so let's play a game. If it's empty, so empty string, is it going to execute? No. If it's null, is it going to execute? No. And if it's false, is it going to execute? Neither. Yeah? It's tricky because the properties are there. They are just empty, but they are actually created there. So the key is there. So what we can do? There is a special way, I, I mean, wait, there's a special method in the hash table called contains key. So I'm doing details contains key and in the brackets I'm, provi I'm providing the name of the key I'm after. And if it's there, then if the key is there, it doesn't matter if it's false or empty or null, you will execute. And this is actually what you use with your PS bound parameters. Yeah, with this one, just to be clear, PS bound parameters. So when you are writing your function and actually you're checking if somebody passed in the parameter, you, have, you do it exactly the same way. Your PS bound parameters contains key and that's how you can actually this is one of the ways of checking actually that somebody passed in the parameter. And this is much safer than just checking if the variable is there. Because at the end of the day, the, P the PowerShell parameters as you run them through the function are hash table. That's why you can use this. All right, what else we can do? We can do, well, now we're gonna divert slightly, but we can actually create like a custom expression within hash table. So let's create my hash table. We see we have name, we have wage and we have how many hours works yeah and what we can do is select object as you can see so what i'm doing here i piping the that hash table for employee so let's check it you see there is just three properties and i'm telling it in the property give get and this is absolutely part practice but this is just to visualize you that give me all the properties something we probably shouldn't do and then in here, you see, this is effectively a hash table. We're actually on fly creating a new property. So what's the syntax of it? The syntax is I'm opening a new hash table and N stands for new, for the name. So I can, I, I could use name or, or, or just N as the, as, as the abbreviation. So the name is wage and E stands for expression. Yes, yeah? so expression is hourly wage, which is this times hours worked, this. So what do you think will, it's gonna happen now? We have a new property wage. Just because I'm doing this ugly, there's added some more, but effectively wage wasn't there and PowerShell dynamically created for me. So this is really powerful when you need to on fly create something or maybe on fly, you can even use it just to rename re rena rename columns. So you can actually say that this you know, column is equals this and you can do it. You don't need to create a new object. This is really powerful when you're gluing systems together. But okay, we can do that. Now, another way where hash tables are used, it's something called splatting. And what is a splatting? Splatting is a way of passing parameters to your function via hash table. So rather than, okay, I didn't want to go extremely long, but sometimes you see this very long pieces of code that actually have like a, like, you know, five parameters and they just are really long. So what we're doing here, we are retrieving uh, some facts about cats. Yeah, I love cats. I have one, so that's why it's there. But what I'm really after is that I can effectively convert these parameters into a 
hash table. So what I'm doing, I'm opening a hash table like I would normally, so my hash table, and then my key, my key becomes my name of my parameter, and my value becomes my well, parameter value, yeah? So this statement, ah, and then obviously when I'm there, I'm using at params. At indicates that I'm passing you a hash table rather than rather than parameter or variable. So this is the way. So this is a, a special for this case. But pretty much, this statement equals that statement. So this, rather than writing long spaghetti code, I can just get nicely along and pass in on that way. It it really is beneficial when you have a, a longer when you have multiple parameters. It just makes it very clear to read rather than well spaghetti code. So let's try to run. Oh, did I make a mistake? Or did I not run it? Ah, yeah, I didn't run it obviously. So then it complained. But yeah, there we go. Same effect. And another powerful thing about that one is I can on fly add more parameters. So now I'm adding that I want this variables, and we can see that I actually added variables messages. So I can actually, that way, what if I'm building my parameters dynamically through the hash table, I can, I can actually dynamically add more parameters or change their values if something changes on my code. So it can, it can actually make your code much more dynamic. What else we can do? Well, sometimes you go and you actually need to, because obviously what, what we were doing so far was kind of flat, yeah, just set of values, but I can actually create hash tables and that will contain hash tables within it, etc. If you were using some PowerShell, like, I don't know, net and networking functions or, I don't know, any Office 365 functions, then you were probably seeing that they were, but they were nested and you actually had to access them. So we can certainly do that. So let's try, where are we starting? This is yellow, so going from yellow to yellow. So let's try to create it. And now let's access my environments. So you can see I have a couple of environments. One is development, one is test. So what if I ask for keys? It's the same, but values will actually give me a bit more info. But the thing is, if I just ask for values, it's a bit messy because it will, it will actually tell me what, what's the main parameter. And it still doesn't expand what's underneath, isn't it? So what we can do? I can, for example, ask for the specific environment, like in that test. So like before we're asking specific properties, now I'm asking for test. So we can see that in test we have Joe Trivani. And again, we're going down one step lower to get to the to the passwords. And I can also use the same method like we use with the square brackets, to actually ask, ask, access my property and my key, well, actually my, my hash table and then my property. That's it. And I can also use the same way to override the values there. So for example, I want to change username from save to, to admin and let's try. Yeah, exactly. So I can also work there. How we can quickly, because obviously I have my, if we look at it, how can I quickly actually see what's inside it? And the fastest way I found to do that is actually to convert to JSON. So we're piping that to convert to JSON and depth is just that actually will, if you have it like very nested, like say 10 levels, by default you will do first few and then you will still see that actually there's like a PowerShell object or something. So when you actually do depth and then like quite a high number, it will always expand it. So obviously, I don't know if you are fans of JSON, but at least I can very briefly have a look. I can very quickly look actually what's inside that object so I can work with it. Okay, but what if you actually want to create a nested next to the hashtag because that that's well i remember when i wanted to do it first thing kind of well it was kind of a headache well so obviously first of all i'm creating my let's say the main key then so this is production yeah so then to that key i can add my properties so let's add the name and let's add the admin and now in the production you can add another hash table and another password so now if i ask for this there is my production environment that's how we pretty much do. So if I want to go nested, if I want to go deep, I need to create hash table and create stuff within that hash table. Okay, so what else we can do? We can, for example, I don't know, somebody ask you, or oh, we need to dump it to the file, yeah, from the JSON, because JSON is kind of universal format. A lot of systems understand it. So 
the moment we can export something from PowerShell to the JSON, then we can actually use it between different systems, not, not just PowerShell. And then we can just ask for this back. And what's the difference here is that because I'm converting from JSON, yeah, then PowerShell actually now we create it as the object. We see it's different format, but this is effectively an object. And the final one, because when you are starting using PowerShell, it says that it is an object. Yeah, everything is in PowerShell is object. You always strive to actually have an object, nothing else but actually having an object. And creating an object in PowerShell is as simple as creating normal hash table and then adding in the square brackets ps custom object. This is it. This is the only difference between hash table and the object. So let's try and now let's retrieve it. And we can see now we have this behaves like a normal PowerShell object. Or if you already had create if you already have a hash table, yeah, like in here, you can cast it. And by casting we mean that we are on fly converting properties of one certain value or type to another certain value of type. So in that case we can just cast a hash table into custom object. And we have PowerShell custom object, which is really what you want when you when you're working with PowerShell when, or when you're returning data, just do it as the object. It saves a lot of time and it just works as expected. Okay, that's my brief, brief, quick crash. I don't know, call you how you want, but this is it. This is my introduction to the hash tables in PowerShell. There we have it, hash tables in PowerShell. I hope, yeah, that you really start using more of them if you haven't yet or you haven't had an excuse to use them. Well, now you can make excuses because you know how quite a few cases. On the next video, we're going to actually learn about cust PS custom objects. So the thing we just created at the end, because this is really the essence. But to get there, well, we needed to understand arrays, then we needed to understand hash tables so we can actually focus on the objects. So I hope you like this. Let me know in the comments if there's any particular topic you want me to do a video about, please do, because that will help me a lot to pick the next the next videos. And yeah, we, let's stay in touch. See you next time. Bye bye.